Welcome back everybody, this is AMF and let's play some more Penumbra. So let's open up some desks here before we go figure out what's in door number one and door number two. Looks like there's nothing important really. There's a gas lantern, but we don't need to really turn it on because it's not going to give us anything important. So let's see what we got here. Ew, that's a tongue. Yee. Yay for tongues. The largest spider I've ever seen with its guts carved open. Sounds like somebody was having a good lunch, maybe. Possibly. But probably not, because that's really gross. On a lighter note, let's not go there, and let's go in here. Sheesh. This hole isn't large enough for a man. Not that I'd go anywhere near it, even if it was. What burrowed out through that tunnel? Well, you know what? That's not really important. But what is important is beef freaking jerky. That is always a good decision. And now we're heading out. Just because. There's nothing left there for us to do. Okay, I need to turn off my flashlight. And away we go. We have more places to go. Uh, okay. It's time to crouch, bitch. Get out your trusty hammer, because that's going to come in handy, I guarantee you. There you are, you son of a bitch. Yeah! Shit. No. a little bit, I'm sorry. I panicked. Shouldn't have done that. Never panic in those situations. Just don't. You just gotta be careful. You can't just wait for whatever's around that corner. You need to hide. Well, you know what? You don't need to hide. You just walk up right behind that son of a bitch and hit him right in the ass. Crisis averted. He is now dead. Let's head off to the office, actually. There's got to be something useful in there. I think. Actually, we've already been to the office, haven't we? I can't quite remember. Let's see, that's the workshop and the storage room. We have not been to the office yet, so let's go to the office and check out what's in there. We must explore all available options. Because if we don't, well, we're probably going to miss out on something important. And, you know, God forbid we do any, anything like that. So head in the door and let's uh, continue, huh? Looks light enough in here. I don't think I have to... Let's get some back string and another note. Let's see, 15th of August, 1945. Command Bunker, Emergencies, Airstrip Zulu, Weekly Report. Another air sh another unremarkable week in Greenland. I'll continue this in a sec, hold on a sec. Let's see, regular supply shipment received, standard emergency drills carried out, routine runway maintenance completed. I have ordered maintenance but carried out twice weekly from here on in. Due to increased snowfall, one wounded. The one wounded figure is no cause for concern back in London. The Germans have, haven't extended their front line by 4,000 miles. Two of my men were caught manufacturing cherry bombs in our workshop armory and succeeded in blowing off a couple of fingers. I take partial responsibility for this in that I allow them to access the demolitions manual we keep in the storeroom. And I'm sure that's where they learnt the ingredients. As a precautionary measure right now, I have now locked up that manual in the chest in my office and will keep the key on my person at all times. Needless to say, both men have been disciplined, and the injured man has been sent home for medical care. Let's see. I cannot help but think that a more suitable punishment would have been for him to stay out here, but the matter's out of my hands. This base is so disconnected sometimes, I feel as if war could end, and we might not even hear about it out here. 
Supplies requisition order. Dynamite for excavation purposes. Seven bayonets. Not necessary in my opinion, but, proce pre ah, but procedure states we should have a full complement. And one industrial ice pick for removing the damn ice that forms on the external hatch. One pair of reading glasses, category 7C, in order for myself. My glasses are in a rather poor state of repair and could do with replacing. Reconditioning of the mind continues to progress. Or progress, whichever you like to call it. The structure is being fortified from potential bomb damage and excavation of previously caved in areas is going ahead. One point of curiosity is some kind of archaeological find and artifact buried in the earth and discovered by one of the work teams. Later this evening, after martial duty, I shall take a closer look at the artifact. It appears to be man-made. It may have working parts inside. I shall remove what looks like the front cover and see if I can't discover the source of light which constantly emanates from it. Chief NCO M. Major. So, this is that artifact he's talking about, so let's take a, take a look-see. A man, an old man, clutching something unseen. He is strange, and yet he is no stranger. Never seen before, still I know this man before me is Howard. I call him Father. It was different, but the same. That time, like I had more control. But over what? Let's see, we got drawers. There's gotta be important things in these. Small key and another note. God, so many notes. Copenhagen Post, Monday 17th of August 1930. Psychotropic deposits at the bottom of death mine. See, research at the University of Copenhagen have suggested that the mind-altering chemicals naturally sewn into the rock may be the cause of the high suicide rates at a Greenland mine. The university, which has recently been conducting studies into isolated communities, first became interested in the workers of the Northwestern Lead Mine last year. They discovered that even taking into account Greenland's naturally higher suicide rate, local figures for the, fast, for the last 100 years were abnormally high at 46 deaths per 100,000 populace, compared to the national average of 29. On further investigation, experts diagnosed, in many of the minor symptoms in common with the earlier stages of paranoid schizophrenia. This has prompted researchers to hypothesize that natural deposits of lysergic acid, a pH 4 formula recently discovered to have hallucinogenic properties, may be present in the rocks. Few locals who were conducive or were conducive to the interview, but those who agreed to speak had their own explanation. Inuit spirits known as the Turngite live in the mountains. The university is awaiting the results of the chemical testing and studies continue. Let's check out what we have in here. If anything. I not I never remember if there's anything in there or not. Hey, more beef jerky. That's always a good sign. Always a good decision. Let's grab what's in here. Or actually, no, you gotta use that key. The Big Book of Explosives. We will go over the Big Book of Explosives in the next video, so stay tuned for the next part of Let's Play Penumbra Overture. This is AMF, signing out for now. See you later.